Hello students, this will be the last part of your final preparation paper series. This video will have some important 10 mark questions. So first we will see the question, critically examine the administrative experiments of Muhammad bin Tughlaq. So being an essay, you start with a proper introduction. Muhammad bin Tughlaq was an important ruler of Tughlaq dynasty. He is known for his military, economic and administrative experiments. So now you start with the first heading that is administrative reforms. So we start with the first heading administrative reforms. He increased the taxes in the Dobe area. So now what is Dobe area? The area between river Ganges and Yamuna were very fertile. Those area were called as Dobe area. So the area between river Ganges and Yamuna were very fertile. Muhammad bin Tughlaq decided to increase the tax in this area. Although it was a practical decision, it was introduced at the time when lack of rainfall was there. The farmers were unable to pay and they were punished. This made Muhammad bin Tughlaq very unpopular. So, when the question is asked about critically examine the administrative experiments of Muhammad bin Tughlaq or this question can be asked in one more way. Why is Muhammad bin Tughlaq called as a mixture of opposites? For both the question, you can write the same answer. You start with an introduction. Muhammad bin Tughlaq was an important ruler of Tughlaq dynasty. He is known for his military, economic and administrative reforms. Then you go on to the administrative reforms. Increase of tax in the Dobe area. The area between river Ganges and Yamuna was very fertile. That area was called as Dobe area. Muhammad bin Tughlaq decided to increase the tax in this area. Although it was a practical decision, it was introduced when there was lack of rainfall. The farmers were unable to pay and they were punished and this made Muhammad bin Tughlaq very unpopular. The second reform was transfer of capital. To safeguard the capital from Mongol invasion, he decided to shift the capital from Delhi to Devagiri. He built a new city named Daulatabad in Devagiri and he asked the entire population of his empire to shift from Delhi to Devagiri. The entire population had to travel a distance of 1120 kilometers. This journey resulted in death and suffering of the people. Realizing his mistake, the Sultan ordered the people to march back, that is to walk back again. This caused more casualties, that is, this caused more death and suffering. And this incident again made him unpopular. So this was his second administrative experiment and this also failed. So what was it? Transfer of capital. First one was increase in tax in Dobe area. Second one is transfer of capital. To safeguard the capital from Mongol invasion, he decided to shift the capital from Delhi to Devagiri. He built a new city named Daulatabad. He asked the entire population of his empire to shift from Delhi to Devagiri and the entire population had to travel a distance of 1120 kilometers. This long journey resulted in death and suffering of the people. Realizing his mistake, Sultan ordered the people to march back and this caused more casualties and this incident made him highly unpopular. The third experiment was token currency reform. He experimented on coinage to save precious metals like gold and silver. He issued copper coins which have the same value as silver tanka. Minting coins was not retained as a monopoly of the government, that is everyone was allowed to mint coins. The entire empire was flooded with thousands of copper coins. The Sultan asked people to exchange their copper coins with silver and gold coins and this made the royal treasury empty and thus this reform also utterly failed. So the third experiment is token currency reform. He experimented on coinage to save precious metals like gold and silver. 
so he issued copper coins which have the same value as silver tanka minting coins was not retained as a monopoly of the government and every people started minting their own coins the entire empire was flooded with thousands of copper coins the sultan seeing this asked the people to exchange their copper coins with silver and gold coins this made the royal treasury empty and thus the reform of the sultan utterly failed and as a conclusion you can write because of all these reasons mohammed bin tughlaq is called a mixture of opposites although his policies were well meant it were in in planned and badly executed that was the reason for its failure so when a question comes about mohammed bin tughlaq you have to first write the introduction then three main headings that is his administrative reforms first one is increase in tax in dob area second is shifting the capital from delhi to devagiri and third one token currency reform and you end the answer with a conclusion because of all these reasons he is called a mixture of opposites although his policies were well meant it was ill planned and badly executed the next important essay which we are going to see is why is gupta age called the golden age in indian history so we start with an introduction gupta age has a unique position in the history of india due to the all round development it is compared to the age of pericles in greece augustus caesar of rome and queen elizabeth of england so gupta age has a unique or a special position in the history of india due to its all round development it is compared to the age of pericles of greece augustus caesar of rome and queen elizabeth of england now we start with the first subheading revival of hinduism the gupta emperors were followers of hinduism but they were tolerant towards other religions like buddhism and jainism the hindu religion received great encouragement during this period the rulers performed vedic rites and sacrifices sacrifices like ashwamedha rajasuya etc many vishnu temples were constructed during the gupta period shaiva and shakti cult were also popular so under revival of hinduism you will write the gupta emperors were followers of hinduism they were tolerant towards religions like buddhism and jainism the hindu religion received great encouragement during this period the rulers performed vedic rites and sacrifices many <coughs> vishnu temples were constructed during the gupta period and shaiva and shakti cult became popular the next point is education the kings themselves were great scholars and educationalists number of universities developed during this age example nalanda takshashila etc these universities attracted foreign students also pataliputra and vallabhi were great centers of education the important subjects taught were puranas literature philosophy science etc so under education the kings themselves were great scholars and educationalists number of universities developed during this age example nalanda and takshashila the universities attracted foreign students also pataliputra and vallabhi were great centers of education important subjects taught were puranas literature philosophy science etc the next subheading is literature the gupta age is called the golden age of sanskrit literature Samudra Gupta is called as king among poets. Chandra Gupta too had Navaratnas in his court. Kalidasa was the greatest poet and dramatist of ancient India. His famous works are Shakuntala, Raghuvamsha, Meghaduta, etc. So under literature what you will write the Gupta age is called the golden age of Sanskrit literature. Samudra Gupta is called as the king among poets. Chandra Gupta too had Navaratnas in his court. Kalidasa was the greatest poet and dramatist of ancient India. 
His famous works are Shakuntala, Raghuvamsha, Meghaduta, etc. Next is Science and Technology. Aryabhatta was the greatest mathematician and astronomer of this period. His famous books were Surya Siddhanta and Aryabhatiya. He describes about the decimal system in his work. The next important person is Brahma Gupta. He said about the importance of zero. Varaha Mihira, one of the greatest scientists, wrote Pancha Siddhantike and Brihat Jataka. Danvantari was regarded as the father of Indian medicine. The Mehroli Iron Pillar is an outstanding example of their metallurgical skill. The pillar has not rested even after being exposed to sun and rain for centuries. So under science and technology, you write about Aryabhatta, he was the greatest mathematician and astronomer. His two famous books, Surya Siddhanta Aryabhatiya, he describes about decimal system in his work. Brahma Gupta, he said about the importance of zero. Varaha Mihira, greatest scientist, he wrote Pancha Siddhantika and Brihat Jataka. Danvantari, considered as father of Indian medicine. The Mehroli Iron Pillar, which was an outstanding example of the metallurgical skills. The pillar has not rusted even after being exposed to sun and rain for centuries. The last subheading is Art and Architecture. The basic structural features of Indian temple architecture were developed during Gupta period. Banaras, Patna, Devagar were the centers of the artistic activities. The Shavatara temple of Devagar was the first temple of Gupta period. Number of statues of Lord Buddha were also erected during this time. The Guptas gave special encouragement to painting. The rulers built many cave temples in Ajanta. They also painted the scenes from the life of Buddha. So regarding art and architecture, the basic structural features of Indian temple architecture developed during this period. Banaras, Patna, Devagar were centers of their artistic activity. Dashavatara temple of Devagar was the first temple of Gupta period. Number of statues of Lord Buddha were also erected. The Guptas gave special encouragement to painting. The rulers built many cave temples in Ajanta. They also painted the scenes from the life of Buddha. As a conclusion you can write, because of the achievements in all these fields, Gupta age is called as the golden age in Indian history. So when a question is asked about why is Gupta age golden, called as golden age, you start with an introduction, then you write the subheadings. First is revival of Hinduism. Second is education, third literature, fourth science and technology and fifth art and architecture and then you end the answer with a conclusion. So all these points together and uh, with the explanation for all these points it makes a perfect answer for the question why is Gupta age called as golden age in Indian history. The last important 10 mark question is discuss the role of Gandhiji in Indian national movement. This answer has been already discussed in video part 8. So please refer video part 8 because this question is a very very important essay question. Discuss the role of Gandhiji in Indian national movement. With this I end this series of preparation or practice papers for your final exams. All these important questions I have given please keep on revising. And I hope you will support me and my channel by continuing to share it with your friends and juniors who will need it for, the for next year. And after your exams, please don't forget to update me on how you have written your history paper. All the very best to all my students. Thank you.